An hour-long documentary titled The Mystery of the Sphinx was broadcast in primetime on NBC to some 30 million viewers across the United States. The documentary, which would go on to win an Emmy Award for its work, detailed a series of geological and seismic surveys conducted around the Giza Plateau between 1991 and 1993 by a team of Egyptologists led by John Anthony West. What West and his team had discovered during these surveys stunned the viewing audience. According to geological evidence, the Sphinx was not 4,500 years old, as was commonly accepted, but much older, in fact, over 10,000 years old, dating back well before the rise of Egyptian civilization as we know it. Further, seismic surveys showed a vast expanse of unexplored tunnels and chambers underneath the Sphinx, stretching deep underground. Documentary viewers and historians across the world wondered what this could mean, what secrets could be hidden in these unexplored depths. That same year, another team, led by German robotics engineer Rudolf Gantenbrink, sent a small robot equipped with a camera down an unexplored 8 by 8 inch shaft within the Great Pyramid. The robot crawled slowly for 200 feet until it reached a startling impasse, what appeared to be a door made of limestone or marble. More incredibly, the door seemed to have two copper handles on it. Metal, such as copper, is not found anywhere else in the Great Pyramid, leaving Gantenbrink and his team to wonder if they were in fact handles, or perhaps keys, or something else entirely. More importantly, they wondered what could be behind this door. Curiously, Egyptian authorities called the door a hoax, and banned Gantenbrink and his team from exploring further. Despite their offers to give authorities the robot and even train Egyptian technicians to operate the equipment and open the door. The director of the German Archaeological Institute in Cairo, Dr. Reiner Stadelman, strangely sided with the Egyptian authorities insisting, this is not a door, there is nothing behind it. That same year, Egypt's chief inspector for antiquities, Dr. Zahi Hawass, physically expelled John Anthony West and his team from the area after the broadcast of the Mystery of the Sphinx. When West attempted to obtain a permit to resume exploration in 1995, it was Hawass again who made sure the application was denied. Zahi Hawass has basically obstructed us, a dejected West would later tell the New York Times. Certainly, Hawass was not alone, but rather part of what some Egyptologists describe as a mafia involved with the pyramids, controlling research permits, suppressing new information, and in the words of a petition signed by many thousands, hiding possible findings that could be of great importance to all members of the human race. The question is, why? Why would Egyptian authorities obstruct significant research into its legendary wonders? And just what could these possible findings be that could have such great importance to all members of the human race? Perhaps hidden below the pyramids of the Giza Plateau is a history that predates ancient Egypt, a story that shakes accepted mainstream knowledge to its core. Before we continue, we'd like to thank our friends from Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of... The question of what might be hidden under the pyramids did not start with John Anthony West and Rudolf Gantenbrink. Records show that in 1817, the British Council General to Egypt, Sir Henry Salt, alongside the rogue Italian explorer Giovanni Caviglia, discovered a large tomb just west of the Great Pyramid, which opened up to a maze of subterranean passages. Unfortunately, these men were not historians and abandoned exploration of the passages when they found them devoid of the treasure they were hunting. Yet, stories and records alluding to the existence of a subterranean underworld beneath the pyramids have existed for thousands of years recorded and retold by travelers, historians, and the prominent thinkers of the time. Consider ancient Greek legends about a hidden above and below ground complex known as the Labyrinth at the Hawara Pyramid, some 60 miles from Giza. 
as described by 5th century BCE Greek historian Herodotus. There I saw twelve palaces regularly disposed, which had communication with each other, interspersed with terraces and arranged around twelve halls. It is hard to believe they are the work of man. The walls are covered with carved figures, and each court is exquisitely built of white marble and surrounded by a colonnade. Near the corner where the labyrinth ends, there is a pyramid 240 feet in height, with great carved figures of animals on it, and an underground passage by which it can be entered. I was told very credibly that underground chambers and passages connected this pyramid with the pyramids at Memphis. The first century Roman historian Pliny wrote of a tomb deep below the Sphinx, which he described as a tomb of a ruler named Harmachus that contains great treasure. Iamblichus, a 4th century Syrian philosopher, described an entranceway to a subterranean underworld through the body of the Sphinx. In his own words, this entrance, obstructed in our day by sands and rubbish, may still be traced between the four legs of the crouched colossus. It was formerly closed by a bronze gate whose secret spring could be operated only by the Magi. It was guarded by public respect, and a sort of religious fear maintained its inviolability better than armed protection would have done. In the belly of the Sphinx were cut out galleries leading to the subterranean part of the Great Pyramid. These galleries were so artfully crisscrossed along their course to the pyramid that, in setting forth into the passage without a guide throughout this network, one ceasingly and inevitably returned to the starting point. These crisscrossed galleries sound not unlike a labyrinth. In the 10th century, historian and geographer Masudi wrote about this subterranean underworld, and again in the 14th century, an Arab writer named Altalam Sani recorded the existence of underground passages beneath the pyramids in a manuscript still kept in the British Museum. In fact, as British explorer Andrew Collins pointed out, Ancient funerary texts clearly allude to the existence of a subterranean world in the vicinity of the Giza pyramids. Even the name of the area itself suggests this to be true. Giza was called Rostow in ancient times. Rostow translates to the mouth of the passages, the gateway to the Duat, or the other world. If history and modern scientific research are to be believed, there can be little doubt that a vast subterranean underworld exists beneath the Giza Plateau. But what is it for? And who built it? Five grand. American psychic Edgar Cayce, known as the Sleeping Prophet, made a curious assertion. He claimed to have received a vision that the Sphinx was not 4,500 years old, as was commonly accepted, but rather over 10,000 years old, and further, that concealed beneath it was a so-called Hall of Records containing ancient knowledge and wisdom, the true history of the human race. Were these the ramblings of a lunatic or something more? As early as 300 BCE, the Greek philosopher Krantor spoke about pillars of stone which lined passageways under the pyramids, pillars with a record of prehistory chiseled into them. In the 4th century, Roman historian Ammianus Marcellinus noted ancient knowledge recorded on subterranean walls beneath the pyramids designed, he believed, to preserve said knowledge through the Great Flood. Masudi, writing in the 10th century, described how written accounts of wisdom and acquirements in the different arts and sciences were hidden deep under the pyramids that they might remain as records for the benefit of those who could afterwards comprehend them. In his own incredible words, I have seen things that one does not describe for fear of making people doubt one's intelligence, but I have still seen them. In the 1400s, Christian Rosenkreutz, the founder of the Order of the Rosicrucians, spoke of a secret chamber beneath the ground of the Giza Plateau, filled with library books containing ancient knowledge. It must be asked, if such a cache of knowledge does, or even might exist, why would this existence be so vigorously denied by Egyptian authorities? 
Why would further research and exploration be subverted and shut down? Why would these authorities assert, as they did in 1972, that no one should pay any attention to the preposterous claims in regard to the interior of the Great Pyramid or the presumed passageways and unexcavated temples and halls beneath the sand in the Pyramid District? Imagine that records hidden beneath the pyramids revealed a pre-Egyptian culture, as alluded to by historians across the ages, a timeline of history which shows that Egyptians were not, in fact, the builders of the pyramids. If this were the case, then the opposition of Egyptian authorities would be quite understandable. Yet, perhaps there are darker, more nefarious actors at work. What Australian author Tony Bushby described as a hidden level of censorship in operation. Perhaps the true secrets of the pyramids go beyond even a hall of records. Are you a British dad without life? National Institute of Anthropology and History, named Sergio Gomez Chavez, was examining the damage caused by days of heavy rains around the Feathered Serpent Pyramid in the ancient region of Teotihuacan, outside of what is now Mexico City. At the foot of the pyramid, a torrent of mud and debris caused by the rains had opened a three-foot-wide sinkhole. Perplexed, the small and wiry man tied a rope to his waist and lowered himself into the hole. What he found was a perfectly cylindrical shaft leading to a closed-off passage with extraordinary treasures. Green stone crocodile teeth, crystals shaped into eyes, sculptures of jaguars ready to pounce, sealed off from the world, unknown but for a fortuitous act of nature. At the end of the tunnel, Chavez discovered the most unexpected thing, large quantities of liquid mercury. Mercury is an extremely rare and conductive element that today is used primarily in electronics and automobiles, so the presence of this dangerous substance below an ancient Aztec pyramid has puzzled scientists. According to ancient Hindu texts, liquid mercury was part of the propulsion system which the gods used for their flying chariots. Perhaps it's no coincidence that liquid mercury was found in a temple built to honor Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent god that came down from the sky. In the years that followed, Chavez would use a radar device to create an underground map of the unexpectedly extensive collection of tunnels and chambers under the pyramid. Since then, both the Pyramid of the Moon and the Pyramid of the Sun, also in Teotihuacan, have had similar subterranean underworlds mapped using electrical resistance technology. While many may initially think of Egypt or Mexico, the fact is, pyramids appear on every continent. This begs the question, how many of these pyramids have a similar subterranean world beneath them? Consider, starting in 2005, an extensive tunnel and chamber network was found beneath the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids, or that in 2014, archaeologists uncovered a hidden underground tunnel system running from the Peruvian city of Cusco to the Pyramid of Intihuatana at Machu Picchu. How many more examples might be found if exploration was allowed or even encouraged? But the real